Welcome to our review on the transition elements. So first thing we need to know then is where we're going to find these transition elements. And remember in your exam you get the periodic table on the very back page. Now if you look at the periodic table what you'll do is you'll find those transition elements between groups 2 and 3. So in the diagram at the bottom there you can see they're shaded in that blue colour. Now one thing to remember about them is that they're all metals and they've got those typical metal properties. So they're going to be shiny when they're cut, they'll be strong, they'll be malleable. All of those typical properties of metals will be true of these transition elements. When we actually look at the compounds of these transition metals, they're often quite brightly coloured, and in some cases very pretty colours. But for our exam, we need to remember three of these different transition metals and the colour of their compounds. So first of all, copper will form blue compounds. Iron 2 is light green and iron 3 is orange brown. Now you do need to remember those three colours for those three different transition metals, so make sure you learn those. We've already encountered some of these transition elements in the past when we've been looking at catalysts. So what we actually find then is that these transition elements and their compounds are quite often used as a catalyst for a chemical reaction. And remember, when we're talking about a catalyst, we're talking about a chemical that will speed up a reaction without being used up itself. And the example we've referred to the most over the past year and a bit would be when we've looked at the harbour process and the catalyst of that being iron, which if you look at your periodic tables, you can see is one of those transition elements. When we're thinking about these transition element compounds, one of the most common reactions that you'll be asked about on your exam is what's called a thermal decomposition reaction. Now, in these thermal decomposition reactions, what we're doing is breaking one chemical into two or more products purely by heating it. So you should have done an experiment in class, which is shown by the diagram in the bottom left corner there. So in that test tube, we've put our actual transition metal compound, so in this case a metal carbonate. We've then connected a bung with a delivery tube, which goes into a test tube with some lime water in it. When we actually carry out the experiment, we actually heat the metal carbonate there with our Bunsen burner on a blue flame. And then what we'll see is little bubbles of gas coming out into the lime water. Now what we'll actually see as a result of this are two color changes. Firstly, the metal carbonate will change color. And if we were looking at the experiment where we used copper carbonate, then it would start off that kind of light green color that we saw in the actual experiment, and then it would actually form a black powder in the end. Now, the other color change we'll see is in the lime water, which starts off as a colorless liquid, and then it ends up going cloudy. Now, be very careful on your exam paper to use those particular phrases. Now, what we can actually see when we look at the symbol equation there, is that we start off with CuCO3, which is our copper carbonate. That's our one chemical that we're going to break down by heating. And on the right hand side of the arrow, we can see our two products, CuO for our copper oxide and CO2 for carbon dioxide. So the reason that we actually have that lime water then is to test for carbon dioxide. So if ever in your exam paper you're asked what the gas test for carbon dioxide is, it's lime water. Now usually this will be a two mark question, so one mark you'll get for saying that we're going to use lime water, second mark is for saying that it goes from colourless to cloudy. And the key phrase there is colourless, you can't use any other phrase because they won't give you the marks. You have to say that it goes from colourless to cloudy if carbon dioxide is present. 